So our chocolate fudge has finished mixing now. It's had its final 20 minutes. Again, the, the method for making chocolate fudge is exactly the same as for making vanilla fudge, just with a little bit more water. We use between five and a half and six cups of water in this. The first thing I'm gonna do is cover the swirls with a bit of chocolate fudge and then swirl them up. So I'll start with the vanilla. Again, always turning the mixer off before we do anything. Then just pour some fudge out to about the normal depth of a tray. Again, in the summer, the chocolate fudge can be quite thick if you're right at the bottom end of the water content. Cover them all in one go, then we can swirl all three in succession. If you leave these fudges too long, they will go quite hard and it will make it very, very difficult to swirl. They tend to find their own level and you're going to swirl them up anyway, so you don't need to mess around with them too much. Right, so we've covered these three trays and then we want to get some colour from the bottom onto the top. There's lots of different ways to do this, there's not really a right or wrong way. Some people use a spoon, others use a spatula, I prefer a spatula. You need to hold the paper and just dig down under the fudge, under the white fudge, lift it like that and tip it onto the top. So you hold the paper again, dig down underneath the vanilla fudge and just flip it over like that. The aim here again is not to move fudge from one end to the other, but just to get some colour onto the top. You just turn the tray around, again dig down under the vanilla and just flip it over here. Now you might want to fill this corner in if there's a gap there, um, but the fudge does tend to find its own level. So we'll just leave that to one side, give it a shake. If you want to shake it, don't hold the paper, just shake it like that and it will level out nicely. And then we're going to put a pattern in that. So I'm going to show you that again, but this time with the orange fudge. You see there the orange is a little bit thicker than the vanilla, so it's a different finish on it. And again, just give it a shake. It'll take a little bit more time to make, but the swirls really do sell so much better than a layered fudge. It's worth the effort. Lastly, and again, I always finish with a mint because it's such a strong flavour. Exactly the same again. And I said earlier, a lot of people will just use a spoon for this. They'll just dig down with a spoon and do that all over the tray. So now the question is what sort of pattern you want to put in these. And again, there's lots of different patterns you can use. To do the pattern, I actually use a wooden stick. Some people use a skewer. Again, there's lots of different things that you can use. I'm going to start with a figure of eight. I'm going to do it in the vanilla fudge. And this is just a very simple figure of eight pattern. Like so. And the orange, I'm going to do a feathering pattern, which again is very simple, it's just straight lines. I'll just tip that to the camera a bit. So it's lines one way, then back down between each line, going the other way. And then you do the same across the tray.
and finally back down through the middle of each line. Okay. And finally, most people will do a random pattern of any description. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. But that can look very effective as well. We're going to leave those to one side. Again, they'll take a few hours to set, but they'll be ready to sell tomorrow.